Alrighty, everyone, welcome back. So, I said yesterday I was going to make a video very soon on um, the Winnipeg Jets, and do I think they're a contender with the core that they have? And this is that video. Um, obviously, Mark Shifley and Connor Hellebuck uh, signed identical seven-year, $8.5 million contracts, and it sparked the conversation of, is Winnipeg going to be able to win a Stanley Cup or be contending with this roster? And I would say... That probably not. I hate to say it, but we'll get into that in a second. Um, but let's look at the contracts first. Obviously, as I just said, they signed seven-year, $8.5 million deals identically. Um, I'm sure there's different trade requirements or like trade, um, no trade clauses uh, within there that are different for each team or for each player. But, you know, that's, that's obvious. Um, but I did want to discuss, um, you know, like it doesn't do them well in the short term. But it does them well in, or it doesn't do them well in the long term. It does them well in the short term, is, is what I meant. I'm, I'm bugging today. But yeah. Um, and now they have $2.3 million in cast space. And thankfully, what's on their side is they don't have a whole lot of um, big name guys besides maybe one or two. Uh, you look at their UFAs, you got Nino Niederreiter, Brendan Dillon, Dylan DeMello, uh, and then Laurent Brassois. So obviously, not huge losses there. Niederreiter affects the top six a little bit. Um, Dylan and DeMello, um, solid defend defenseman, um, but, you know, and then you got Lauren Bersois there as well as a backup goalie, so, you know, like, those are obviously guys you want to sign, um, uh, most likely, but they aren't huge worries, um, to get signed. They'll probably move the right people to get those guys signed the contracts if they end up keeping them around. I mean, hey, we have a whole nother, we have all season of hockey to play, so some of these guys could get traded, something else could happen, uh, we'll find out. Um, but your RFAs is where I'm a little bit concerned. You got Cole Perfetti, um, David Gustafson, Logan Stanley, and Zach Sanford, and Ville Hainola. So Perfetti, he's going to want money. Um, I think if he has a year or like people are projecting him to have, he will deserve that money for sure. Um, but, you know, like Gustafson too, he's a good, he's a good depth center. Um, San Stanley and Sanford, they're solid um, options depth wise, Stanley, I've been, I've heard be complained about so many times by Jets fans. Um, but that is a factor. Heinola, not a bad defenseman, just has been hurt, um, uh, way too many times. Um, and I want to look at their depth chart. I want to look at their overall lines because I want to ask the question, can they beat the teams in their division? Can they contend? Can they win a cup? Um, like you look at this team, can they beat Colorado? Can they beat Dallas? Can they beat Minnesota? Um, can they beat the other rising teams in that division? Can they beat the Pacific? Like, those are questions that need to be asked. So we'll look at the forward core. Um, so we'll go through the top six, and I know it's weird on the graphic, but I'm trying on a new font. Probably not going to use it again, but, you know, just enjoy it. Um, you got Kyle Connor, Mark Shifley, Gabriel Velarde as your first line. Then you got Nikolai Ehlers, Cole Perfetti, and Nino Niederreiter as your second line. These chart, these um, lines are, by the way, by the daily face-off. So don't come at me if these lines are, are weird. Oh, he's on the different line. Yeah, no, these, I didn't make these lines. Um, I'm not a ad advocate Winnipeg Jets fan. I'm not a huge one. Um, but, you know, for a top six, it's, it's good. It's definitely a great top six. Um, the first line's awesome. Um, I would imagine, too, and I just realized that this depth chart, you know, like, you know, Perfetti on the second line, that's going to be good for them. Um, and Niederreiter, that second line looks great. Um, Connor and Shifley going to score a lot of goals. New acquisition, Gabriel Velarde, definitely helps out. Um, but, you know, yeah, the top six is great. The bottom six is a little bit uh, is a little bit concerning, but I like it more than I liked it in previous years. Um, you got Alex Iafalo, or sorry, yeah, Alex Iafalo, Adam Lowry, and Mason Appleton as your third line. Then you got just or Morgan Baron, um, Rasmus Kupari, and Vladislav Nemestikov as your fourth line. Then you got Alex Johnson, Vajalbi, um, David Gustafson, and Ryan Lambert as your extra players who could play in some games. Now, here's what I think Winnipeg has on their side. Um, they have a solid prospect pool. I like guys like Colby Barrow. Barlow, Ryan Lambert, um, you know, Rucker, McGordy. They got some solid guys in their in their depth chart, in their prospect pool that are going to climb up. Is it enough, though? That is the question. The, the, the third line's good. I like the Lowry line. I like that line overall. Fourth line is solid. Um, I think Baran, Kupari, and is going to be a good line. I know for some reason in my Jets preview, I said Morgan Baran's a rookie. He's, he's definitely not a rookie. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, he's not. Um, but yeah, overall, the bottom six is not that bad. 
Is it better compared? Is it good compared to the other ones? Probably not as good, but still decent. Um, the defense is where I've had some concerns the past couple of years outside of um, Morrissey, but Morrissey DeMello first pairing, uh, Sandberg Pionk second pairing, um, Dylan Schmidt third pairing, and then Stanley and Chisholm as your extra defenders. So yeah, um, overall Morrissey and and uh, DeMello good first pairing. Um, Pionk could become that first pairing guy. Obviously, we'll see. Uh, Sandberg, Pionk, not bad. Dylan Schmidt is all right. Uh, Stanley, as I mentioned, has been like heavily flamed by many Winnipeg Jets fans. It's been like a trend for Jets fans to just hate him. Uh, and then Chisholm, he's been down in the he's he's been down below with the Manitoba Moose for such a long time. Um, I don't know if he's going to get time in the NHL this year. I hope he does. Uh, but if he doesn't, you could see him just not want to play there anymore. It's very possible. Uh, and then the goaltending is pretty much the same it's been for the past couple of years um, with Hellebuck and Brassois. I know Brassois left for a season, but he's back now. So, you know, like it's basically the same tandem we had, expect, it, just not last season. But, you know, and with that, I asked myself the question. I've been asking this a lot the past couple of days. Are they a team that can win a cup with that roster? And if it, I'm going to say no, to be honest. I, I, I can't see it. Um, I think there are some holes in the bottom six. The defense isn't as suitable. Um, but, you know, everything else is solid. But just can they compete with Colorado? Can they compete with Dallas? I can't see it. Um, if, they, if you know, getting Blake Wheeler out of the locker room and all that negative chemistry, him being gone probably helps a lot. And we could see them have a pretty good season, comparatively speaking. Um, but just for me, I don't know if I could see you know, them going all the way. If they're going to go all the way, it needs to happen within the next, like, two to three years. Absolutely. If if they want to go all the way with this core, they're going to need to do it in the next two to three years. Because even though, like, they signed these guys at seven-year deals when there was a lot of trade rumors around them um, heading into the season, this goes to show that they are doubling down on this core. They're kind of like the New York Islanders, but they're in a better situation than the New York Islanders where, you know, their, their core is definitely better than New York's, um, but they're definitely, they're doubling down on basically the same roster. Um, but overall, I think they're in a better spot than maybe people, people profile them to be. I like the prospects they have coming up. The core is decent. Um, just as long as they had the right pieces, maybe they could contend. Um, but yeah, Winnipeg, they're obviously in a very interesting spot. I don't talk about them too often on the channel. Hopefully I want to change that. But yeah, let me know your thoughts if you think Winnipeg is a legitimate um, cup contending team, but yeah, that does it for me. Hockey's on in about 30 minutes, but anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Adios.